All right, uh, on that note, let's begin our discussion. Peter Kaluma, Homa Bay Member of Parliament, is on his way. This is what's happening in Parliament uh, right now. The Committee of the Whole House is currently uh, deliberating before they go for the third reading. That's uh, what's happening in Parliament. We don't have the pictures, but uh, that's what's happening. Jeff Kirui is still there. But Madeira, Member of Parliament, is right here um, to help us with this discussion. As we wait for Peter Kaluma, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Mahesh, what is happening in Parliament? We see those pictures of uh, the members of Parliament in the committee stage. Yes. What exactly are the stages needed next after what you have done right now? Uh, thank you, Ken. Um, this afternoon uh, there was a contribution towards a debate on the constitutional amendment, uh, popularly known as the BBI report. And uh, around six o'clock it was agreed that uh, uh, the debate has been uh, exhausted and we went into voting for the second reading. Okay. You know the requirement because it's a constitutional amendment is half of the members of the House present and voting. You needed a minimum of 175 members of parliament and there was quorum. Voting has gone on, uh, one person by each turn because it's a constitutional amendment. Every member of parliament has to vote has who to are vote. present. Yeah, and others were voting virtually. But yes. And the House was well attended. Okay almost 330 members of parliament okay. and it has gone through the second reading uh, with the 235 uh, votes in favor, 83 against and two abstentions and uh, right now is uh, before the committee of the whole house okay. going close by close and then they will be voting okay. and uh, then it will go into the third reading. What is, what is the necessity of going close by close at this point again, because I thought it's already been looked at. Well, it's just procedural. It's procedural. Because ordinarily, yes. the, whole the, the committee of the whole house will do amendments. Okay. But you know, in this particular matter, the speaker has already ruled that there are no amendments. There are no amendments. So it's just uh, parliament is a house of procedures. Okay. And so these, those, those procedures, procedures must, be, okay. must be observed. Moish, does it worry you? I know the speaker has ruled there's no amendment, there's no further addition to this. But as a member of parliament, um, why did the members of parliament feel that they needed to be given leverage to amend this bill? Well, you know, the parliament doesn't sit in vain. I think in the drafting of this law, uh, there is a problem. Because okay. uh, assuming that the house is just a conveyor belt, most of us have a big problem with it. But that is the law for now. Okay. So what is going on in parliament is a mere formality. Mm -hmm. You know, the only good thing about it is that mm -hmm. uh, we have had an opportunity to be heard. Okay. So that the people who have elected you uh, listen to you, uh, contribute, yeah. uh, no in vain. Because even if you are in disagreement, there's nothing you can nothing do. Nothing you can do. <laughs> it's nothing the document, you can do. If, yeah. uh, even if you disagree and you vote no, yes. there's nothing you can do. There's nothing. But that's very interesting because there's nothing you can do, but yet you had to do it. Yes. Yes. You had to do it so that nothing can happen. Well, you see, you need to pronounce yourself about those amendments. Just like a common man, a Kenyan yeah, has pronounced yeah. themselves in yeah, public yeah, participation. Yeah, true. Okay. But the beauty, the beauty of it is, even if there is nothing we can do ourselves, mm -hmm. the people of Kenya will have the final say. The final say. And it's important that we speak out so okay. that uh, we speak on behalf of the people and sort of give a certain direction. But uh, in my view, that was wrong. Uh, parliament should not act in vain. Okay. Yeah, that, 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 what, uh, that, that law, the way it was framed, in my view, it is you not You didn't correct. agree with it? No, I don't agree with it because uh, Parliament cannot just be a conveyor belt. Okay. What they would have done if they didn't want Parliament to have anything to do with it, it should have moved from the county assembly mm -hmm. straight to the people. Okay. Because uh, now we are, we, are, we are just a conveyor belt. Okay. There is, we, know, we debate, we talk about it, but there's but nothing there's we can nothing do about you it. Can you cannot amend, you cannot, even if, we, even if uh, it doesn't pass through the House, mm -hmm. it will still go to the people. Much, how did you vote? I voted no. You voted no. Yeah. Now, the, the contention with you voting no mm -hmm. is because a lot of the argument is that you voted um, on the basis of your political alignment Not rather than your conscience. Not at all. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Mm -hmm. Not at all. I voted no because, according to me and the people whom I represent, mm -hmm. it is not a priority for now. Mm -hmm. You know, Ken, we are here now voting at night, we have been talking, we are there up to midnight, yet nobody has called us to discuss 
about the vaccination of the Kenyan people. Mm. Nobody has called us to discuss the lack of food for the Kenyan people. Mm. Nobody has called us to discuss about people not having masks. Nobody has called us to discuss the possible interventions that can be made to cushion the people whose businesses are suffering. Okay. You know, to me, mm -hmm. I find it extremely insensitive. Mm -hmm. And uh, in as much as there's nothing I could do, I needed to pronounce myself okay. on behalf of the people that I represent, mm -hmm. that I vote no because according to the people of Madeira whom I represent and myself. What about the benefit that you get as the people of Madeira out of this constitution, out of the amendment? Does it, you're throwing the baby with the bath water, it doesn't matter the benefits, your conscience is clear. There are no benefits as far as I'm concerned. Really? 35% going to the counties, that's not a benefit? It isn't because uh, there is no law. Uh, right now stopping the government from giving 35 percent okay and uh, if the government so desired mm. to give 30 32 33 uh, without even having to go for a freedom mm. it will still do okay it's unnecessary okay. you can still uh, the government can still appropriate those funds okay. up to 35 up, up to 35 percent there's no ceiling we know there are places in this country that are getting more constituencies you're saying that's not important uh, i'm saying i come from Nyeri. Uh, Nyeri has not gotten an extra constituency. Is that, is that yeah. part of the reason why? Oh, yeah, it's another reason. It's another the reason. Kenny, Kenny constituency, geographically, is 52% of Nyeri. Okay. And uh, it is our conviction that uh, if these constituencies were not put in a schedule by the BBI uh, proponents, if we had gone the IBC way mm -hmm. and the IBC came to listen to our views, yes. we are sure the people of would Kenya have would have gotten a new constituency. Yeah. All right, uh, let me speak to Mwishimi um, Wakaluma. Thanks for coming. I know you ran all the way to Parliament. You didn't even use your car, but good to see you. Yes. How did you vote? I voted yes. With your conscience or because you were whipped by My your party? My conscience and knowledge as a lawyer and uh, also as a leader. Okay. I can tell you, Ken, this joke about opposing BBI mm -hmm. is all politics and an joke. Okay. I was in the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee where I continue to serve. The, benefit, the benefits of, uh, you know, BBI, BBI are innumerable. Yes. If you started counting them, mm -hmm. I think those we'll who not, can We'll who can go to leave. midnight. I would have wished that, you know, regardless tells me this provision he has a problem with. Yeah. You know, people even say some provisions of BBI are unconstitutional. Let him mention one. one that is and, a, he and, says and, 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 there are no benefits as far as he's concerned in the BBI that cannot, can be passed to uh, Kenyans through the BBI. A lot of benefits. You know, Ken, we are devolving a minimum of 35%. And let me tell you, regardless, it is easy to say the government, if they want it, they can give. But I can tell you, unless you put it in law, mm -hmm. you'll never get it. Some people uh, in their politics have said, oh, uh, this uh, 35%, we cannot even give the current 15%. Yes. But let me tell you, under the Constitution, any monies that are due to a devolved unit are a debt on the nation. Okay. Because the monies must be delivered without reductions. That is the language of the Constitution. We are entrenching CDF. We are uh, dealing with uh, the, the, the correcting the issues of population, waiting population. And, and, and you know, this is what um, you know, they have used as a propaganda, uh, shouting it outside there that some constituencies have not been split, some people have gotten more than others. Read Article 89, sub Article 5. Mm -hmm. It says the population of each constituency in Kenya should be as nearly as possible to the population quota. Yes. To the population quota. How do you get the population quota? Is the total population of the country divided by the number of the constituencies? Okay. And I want to challenge uh, Rigadi. Use that formula and have your county Nyeri mm -hmm. divided by the quota you will establish. It will fit you the will name. not go beyond the number of constituencies you have. Nyeri is, uh, is a county which has very many protected constituencies. I was what, personally what protected. They cannot be tagged. They uh, cannot be. Yeah, yeah, protected are those ones which would have lapsed oh, by oh, the end of okay. this term. Okay. Okay. Because they did not meet the, 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 the parameters set previously. Now we have validated them in BBI. Okay. They'll continue to exist. Okay. I was worried for Oma Bay because you remember we were saying in Oma Bay, they were ought to have been split. Grachuanya ought to have been split. But when I, I, I divided the population of Oma Bay, and can some of these things you should do on the screen for people? To see, mm -hmm. divide the population of Omer Bay County 
by the national population quota establishing 360 constituencies. Okay. And uh, you'll get 7.4. Okay. Omabe Omabe already does not qualify. As, as eight yes. already. Yes. So it means we were given before. And regardless, let me tell you something that you may forget. Remember the current... Uh, constituencies were delim delimited by what we call the Independent Interim Boundaries Commission. Okay. Do you remember the yeah, person yeah. who chaired that commission? Uh, that could be Hassan? Legale. Oh, Legale. And, and, Legale, and, and, and yes. remember Legale yeah. Ken was an ODM member in the Ninth Parliament. So if you looked at the weighting of constituencies and uh, the way they were distributed, there mm. is a way in which what were former ODM strongholds got an undue share. Okay. Legale is not telling you. But while in my constituency, or in some constituencies in Kenya, like in Basari, regard, they go, go to Garissa Township and these northeastern you know, you know, constituencies, this thing we call CDF, they have in excess of Basari, they can even take students abroad. Okay. In his constituency, I tell you, he will barely give a student 5,000 shillings. And so we are waiting population as Article 89, Sub-article 5, you know, speaks to it. Okay. Look at this thing we are bringing called parliamentary system. And, and, and this is... We're not bringing it. We're going back to it. We are going back to it. Yes. Let me tell you, my brother, you are senior to me in administration and by age. But I'm senior to you in that parliament. I was in the last parliament. Following budget this year, no cabinet secretary will come to that house. And, and, and you cannot pursue them. MPs will, be, will also be busy with their campaigns. A parliamentary system is more accountable. It is more responsive. If he were a minister now, we would be sorting the issues relevant to his ministry in my constituency before we came in here or outside the studio there. It is also cheaper. And, and, and let me explain this mm -hmm. before we turn it over. Remember when you are in a parliamentary system, all the members of parliament become members of parliament. Uh, I mean, ministers are appointed from parliament. Yeah. Currently, you have 22 CSS. You have nearly 30 CASS. This one's the, the court said were illegal. Mm -hmm. Ken, do you know the amount of facilities we have around them, the Matiangis? Because we are getting some 5 million in car grant, which people cry about. Each CS is getting 14 million. In addition to cars, three cars, you see them from all the over. government? Yes. And then they have a car Yes, grant? yes. Okay. The, in addition to that, they have cars for family, they have cars for wives, they have all those faci facilities, you see them around. We are saving all that because By when you are a member of parliament, yeah. appointed a minister, all you get, and he knows better than me, is some 100,000, 150,000 extra okay. responsibility allowance. Okay. So, so, so it is cheaper. It is cheaper. All these CSS will now be deputy ministers. You're saving money. Okay. What is what? the problem by saying you love a prime minister? Who will be what Duale was, what Kimunya is now? Why is it, having explained that, why yeah. is it that same members of parliament, because my concern, and I asked him the question, mm. is voting along party affiliation and uh, individual affiliation is no longer party aff affiliation, rather than, because if you look at the, the way the vote was taken in parliament, anyone who supports Ruto, when the name was called out, you could actually guess how they're going to vote. And it turned out they voted like that. No, they it's, did not. They did not. Not all of them. In, in fact, not today, all of them. today I can confirm to the nation that if, uh, if we were interested in impeaching Ruto, mm -hmm. of course we are not interested. We will do it even tomorrow. You have the numbers. Today you have a few people, one, two, like Rigade from uh, Central. I hope he will survive the politics we'll take there now that they are inviting them to us. But, but Ruto essentially remained with the Kipsigis and Nandi, and, 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 and not okay. even Kalenjin. Let, let, let me bring it. Having, we have taken over. Peter, having explained all that, still for you, baby and bathwater? No, I don't think so. Uh, he's wrong. Let them try the impeachment. You see what has happened? There are many people they are who not support... Going to they are, yes, let them try. Yes. There are many people who support the deputy president. Not This is what but you who said voted last yes. time. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. I have the Honorable Shadrach Mose, yeah. the MP for Kitutu Masaba. They are getting an extra constituency. Yeah. All politics is local. He yes. listened to his people. He voted yes. We have uh, Moshimua Keringo of uh, Nyabene Central. He is with us. He voted yes. We have Mwishimu Akebani Ngujiri. He is with us. He voted yes. This is totally different from the politics. There were a lot of uh, local political considerations that played in the way one voted. Okay. You know? Mm -hmm. Even if I have a problem with this BBI, if there was an extra constituency for Madeira, I would have voted yes. 
because that is local politics. So let uh, the Honorable Kaluma not con confuse local politics with national politics. You know, mm -hmm. there, 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 there are many people who are, and they asked, we had a discussion but this that morning. Shows their we had a discussion this morning, yes. and we agreed, let everybody vote according, according to, to their his conscience okay. and local politics. We are going for elections. All politics is local. Okay. Today, myself, I could not vote differently. All politics is local. The people of Madera are no. And I know because I belong there. Okay. And I invite them, I invite them uh, when they, they go around uh, to come to the ground and convince them. Okay? Before I live there, I'm elected there. I know much better what yeah, happens in the Madera than he does, definitely. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't know much about, about how much. I can't talk about it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know. Mm -hmm. He doesn't understand Mount Kenya politics. He wouldn't know. I like the you aspect know? of politics is local. It's I'm local. going to talk about that. All, poli and, 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 all and, and, politics and, 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 is local. Yes. All politics is local. local. Okay. You must, if you are a good leader who knows what he's doing, you must listen very, very carefully to what the people are saying. I went to Nyeri over the weekend to Madera, and I called key people. Key, the ones who know and who say. And I asked them, mm -hmm. this matter is coming to parliament. What are your instructions? How do you vote? What are your instructions? Okay. Had they told me to vote, yes. You would have voted, yes. I would not have argued. Let, 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 Politics let, is local. Let me ask you, Moish. Uh, how many people from your region voted yes? From no, ask I, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Nearly. Yes, that's what I, 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 don't, I, I, I don't have. I, I don't have the numbers. But so I, there are numbers sure, that voted yes. I'm sure. Yes. I'm sure the women, our women rep, yes, uh, voted no, and myself. I think the others voted yes. Okay. So two. and it's okay mm -hmm. because you see what you do. People are in different constituencies. Okay. You listen to your people, and uh, you go according to what they want, or better still. You listen to your conscience. Okay. Yeah. You, you okay. see, Ken, the truth is that um, that was a voice uh, kind of voting. And I can tell you from Nyeri, it is only Rigade and uh, Wamawa who voted no. No, Wamawa so, is, so is from... Wamawa is No, not Wamawa. I mean Wamawa is uh, from, uh, the, the women rep. I'm Mukami. forgetting her name. Yes, called Mukami Wachira. Who voted no. Mm -hmm. All other MPs from Nyeri voted yes. So I don't know how they hear the Nyeri people mm -hmm. <laughs> that, uh, you know, all the others don't. But mm -hmm. the truth of the matter is that how many protected constituencies do you have in Nyeri, including Nyeri town? No, that argument. They, they are all being validated mm -hmm. now. Otherwise, they would be lost. Mm -hmm. okay. He has uh, requested that we visit there. In fact, let me confirm to you. Nyeri is going to be our first entry point when we start our referendum campaigns now. And, 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 and we probably will see our... Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, we are moving. We are, we are not waiting. Okay. We are around the walls of Nyeri. What, what you do, uh, Honorable Kaluma, when you come to Nyeri, mm. before you come, please send some food for people who have no food. There are people who cannot pay rent because of COVID. The hotels were closed down. The bars were closed down. Some people who had matatos, they are being auctioned. Before you come to talk about BBI, I just want to give you free advice because I listen to those people. So BBI made yeah. them angry. Yeah. No, I'm saying yeah. people have not eaten. People, their houses have been locked to them, to the people that I represent and the people that I know. Mm. This is not a priority. That's, that's more yeah. important to them. Yeah, it's not. It's not a priority. Yeah, yeah, but you you know, see, there are people, there are people mm. who have uh, borrowed money. They have uh, bought matatus, and uh, they cannot travel. They call less people, and the loan is still going on. Interest is still accruing. But they are not able to pay. Across the country. That's honestly. what I'm saying. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Yes. Where I come from, yeah. when I listen to them, that's your concern. Yes. That is not their priority. Ken, you know? And I listen to them because that is my work. Okay. I listen to them. That's not their priority. Ken, Ken, I've not seen anywhere in the world where, you know, human life has stopped because of corona, because they are hungry, because of those many other things. We are looking at how to make Nyeri, together with uh, the entire country, prosper. And, 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 and uh, we will not, uh, you know, make the people of Nyeri, the poor, wretched people, the IMP is making them. Nyeri uh, produced the third president of this country. Nyeri are some very hardworking people. So I will not, I can assure you, regarding go to Nyeri with a bag of potatoes saying you eat, then you vote for BBI. We'll not do that. Peter. The world has to move. And let me tell you where we have reached. Where we have reached. We are moving this nation forward. After corona, mm -hmm. after the famine which is seasonal, Kenya will remain. Peter, Kenya must be good. I hear everybody. what Rigathe is saying. Mm -hmm. 
the priority for people right now, the mm. priority for people in Homabe, mm. in Migori where I come from, mm. in Nyeri where he comes from, mm. could also be cushioning them against the adverse effects of COVID-19. Mm. Your own deputy party leader, Wickley for Paranya, said at one point that the BBI is not priority when they cannot channel the funds to fight COVID-19. And they've been using the money that they have within the counties to fight COVID-19. And the national government is not helping. I interviewed him yesterday. Mm -hmm. He's not the only one. Yeah, yeah. Okoto Bado of Migori has said the same let, thing. Let me tell you, can, so he's not uh, can, speaking can, can, can you see the people you're counting? We are approaching politics. This, uh, you know, independent uh, mind of Oparanya, you never saw it before. And I can tell you, you're going to continue to, to see them. These are people whose terms are ending. These are people who are positioning themselves. I would only request that they, they, they focus their vision about the, the direction the politics is taking properly. Uh, where is Okoto Bado going? It will be normal for you now to hear any governor, whether it is Amazon King, whether Joe, or Myrona Witi, now pretending. It's all, it's all about positioning. And, but Wakili is a point to what they say. Forgive them. You can't just dismiss Let them. me tell you, yes. Ken. If there is one thing in which I can support President Kenyatta is how he has been able to you know, manage the, the country in this COVID season. Remember, we started no, not knowing how this thing is. Even in Parliament, we started at very low numbers. You see how we've been studying the mutation of this thing as we move forward and joining the forces. What is this challenge we are saying that uh, you know, the people of Nyeri are facing on corona, which the nation is not facing? That's true. Are, there, there, I'll there take are, you back. There, there, I'll take you back there, there, to my there, there point. Are, are These efforts, concerns are genuine. There are efforts yeah. being made. I'm not lowering the fact that as a nation we have other matters we can also be dealing with. Where I fault your direction is that we stop everything because there is this thing called corona. I mean, Tanzania did elections the other day. The United States did elections the other day. But, but, Kenya but, will not But Tanzania, stop. until Kenya, Sulu came in, they never Kenya. even thought COVID was serious. Correct. Yes, but, and but, the U.S. that you're mentioning, Biden got in, and within yes. 100 days, yes. one of his interests was to get people vaccinated, which they've succeeded Correct. within 100 days. Yes. COVID was their priority. Getting money to the people was the priority of Biden. Do you, do you want to appreciate the efforts the government is uh, making to vaccinate people? Only, but getting money to the people. Do, do you want to appreciate the state of your economy and whether you can sustain that thing you call getting money to the people? Uh, unless you don't know, you know, and you don't appreciate why we are here, you know, this late. You can't say that be, because uh, of COVID, people now must be given free money. I'm, I'm a person who comes from uh, largely an agricultural, uh, you know, constituency. And, and, and you remember when this thing started, everybody went back sitting saying we are waiting for money to be given by government, government or, or, or food dolls. Mm -hmm. And I told them, Mama Bay, you should give, produce enough food, isolate yourself okay. in your farms. So, and, you and, and produce. So, so the, the thinking you are creating to people that mm -hmm. because of corona, everything else ought to stop. That's not what I'm there. saying. What I'm saying let is prioritizing. Us, let us manage mm -hmm. this thing as we also open up the economy. Okay? okay? But in the meantime, agree, nothing will stop. Regarding next year, there will be elections, corona or no corona. Because there are things that are critical to the moving forward of a society and a nation. You what if I stop. said there are things that are so critical and important to the politicians and the political class? No, there is nothing uh, about a politician okay. other than governance in the current BBI but, text. Uh, but Ken, mm. I, I want to differ with my brother here. Maybe I can stop because people have stopped their lives. What does it mean that nothing can stop? People have stopped their lives, literally. People who are at restaurants are at home. Their lives have come to a halt. People who are doing transport, their lives have come to a halt. And people are wondering, what is this BBI that cannot wait? If we can suspend our lives living okay. and earning a living and just stay and wait. Okay. And we don't know what happens tomorrow. I agree with you. President Mwai Kibaki is a grandson of Nyeri. Mm. And he left and, them very uh, poor. He left, we were good. Mm. Let me tell you, we were good. Mm. We are not good anymore. Nyeri, there's a problem. Not mm. just Nyeri, the Mount Kenya region. Here in Yamakema, where our people are doing business, C.S. Matiagi came there and declared all the goods counterfeit, and they were touched. Those people went back home. In Yamakema, during Kibaki's era, goodwill for a shop was three million to get a shop on the ground floor, three million. Today, the shops are closed. You go there, no goodwill. Just come in, pay us what you can.
And what do you blame that? I'm saying economic management. Things have gone haywire. Okay. You know, and I've been saying, and many people talk here in Nairobi. And uh, but, but you see, listen, listen, let me finish. Uh, let me, let uh, me finish. Let the, me finish. Together you are an MBA. But, but let me finish. Let me tell you. Mm. Uh, because I, 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 I know our people. Mm. We have been hit very hard economically. We are finding it extremely insensitive and irresponsible to push an exercise like BBI when people have not been vaccinated. You know they brought a million vaccines. They did the first dose to a few people. The second dose is not even there. People do not know what to do about the, the next dose. There was no plan. There was nothing. But this BBI, this is on track. But, but Everything goes according to track. Moish, I don't think that, that's a fair statement because the time for vaccination was this year and every other country began, at least the country that began earlier was late last year. And BBI started long ago. So you can't what say I, you're pushing this without vaccination. No, I'm yet. saying, I'm saying yeah. a pandemic has come. Between the BBI mm -hmm. and the corona pandemic, which is an emergency, the pandemic is there, it's an emergency. What, you, what happens when you get emergencies? You deal with emergencies. Could I ask you this yeah, before I Because I'm just wondering, because yeah. I'm just wondering, I'm just wondering, I'm just wondering, I'm, I'm just wondering, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I can see from the vote today, we are going to the referendum. Yes. That is clear now, that uh, the government is keen On for all intent to push this thing. Okay. okay. I'm uh, just wondering yeah. how people will be talked to, how they will be mobilized, we are telling them to stay at home, keep uh, social distance, and we are pushing this thing full throttle. Okay. And then I'm, I'm just wondering, mm -hmm. uh, as we push it, what do we do about people's lives? Okay. I need, to ask, I need to, to ask you this before I go to Peter. Yes. Mm. Last year, when the first case of corona was announced in the country, we thought, ah, by April we'll be good. Mm -hmm. Then we thought, ah, by June we'll be good. Mm -hmm. Then we thought by August, then we're in December. Then this year we said, oh, vaccination will be good. Mm -hmm. Look at what President Uhuru Kenyatta did on the 29th of March and just opened up. We don't know when the virus is going to go away, right, across the world. Yeah. So the U.S. is just reopening up, I think is the best example right now. But last year, same time, it was devastated. Mm -hmm. So according to you, we stopped everything concentrate on eliminating the virus yeah. the country doesn't move on because we don't know if it'll take another two years or three years to me yeah we vaccinate everybody and we create interventions okay to cushion the people from the effects of the regulations that have been put in place okay to me that is to what okay. can, that is what can, is can, yeah. can um, you know regarda is right is expressing this concern about the suffering of of kenyans and and all of us including you in the media even members of parliament, we are not as comfortable as we were before. But regarding whose work is it to appropriate money? Now, now that as a member of parliament, you really, you know, know and believe Nyeri people are suffering. You know, we are pushing a matter which is for parliament and for us as members of parliament to the executive. Article 95 of the constitution says we are the ones who budget and appropriate what has regarded as a member of parliament seeing the people of Nyeri suffer other than this politics we keep playing done to move a motion or an appropriation even the supplementaries we were doing last time to say this one should go to help the people of Nyeri okay. yeah I, I only fault him to the extent that we have uh, failed or he has failed in his duty yet he's seeing his people suffering okay. he's not realized why the people of Nyeri said in this uh, you know 2010 constitution that he'll be the one who is appropriating money and determining whether the priority areas for, for expenditure. And bl blaming the executive who is sitting you know, in status there. By the way, regard the budgets, even for Uru in status, oh, why don't you budget for Nyeri? This is why I'm saying we are talking politics. Okay. If we this are leaders well meaning, meaning mm -hmm. between me and regard we can call the Treasury Cabinet Secretary or the central bank and we'll know how much money you know we problem. have and, and, and what interventions we can create let us not fail my brother okay then we push the back to uru kenyatta because it is political let, let's, let's you know, be very honest yeah. Yeah. Kaluma, what money do we appropriate the country has hardly no money <laughs> even the, the budget they have proposed mm -hmm. the deficit okay. eh, is, is more than half mm -hmm. so we have no money even for those interventions mm -hmm. and that's why we are saying mm -hmm. whatever little money that is available let's do it yeah for, let's, let's, let's cushion it. people mm -hmm. yeah economically from the effects of COVID-19. COVID All right. Yeah. Uh, direct that little money there. Mm -hmm. Don't shout about helping people when as MP you're not directing the money there and it is your work to do so.
Okay, gentlemen, I'd like to talk briefly about uh, what happened yesterday in the National Assembly the other day. And um, I want to talk about that, putting into context what uh, um, uh, James Orenko had to say in the floor of the Senate. Let's listen to this. Mm. I would encourage, from my own experience, that, that uh, each senator has got his own self-worth. And when you sit or come before the Senate as a parliamentarian, you have your own self-worth. And me, I can never be intimidated in my political life. Can never be intimidated. Because I've seen many people come and go. I've seen many powerful people come and go. I've seen presidents come here and go. I have seen people who, on their word, you would leave this house and you'd be locked in the same day. They have come and gone. I have seen very respected women in this country like Grace Onyango, who was in the committee for the, for the special investigations relating to the disappearance of uh, uh, Nani, uh, Jem. Yeah, yeah. And that made me, made me very proud. I mean, that was um, Honorable James Orengo in the Senate. And uh, this stems from what was happening in ODM. I want you, Honorable Kaluma, to put to context what was happening because there was a lot of uh, um, talk about his removal. And the reason why this is also important, we saw what happened to Jubilee, mm -hmm. members of uh, parliament, heads of committees who are removed. It's a prerogative of the party, who they second, who they remove, how they want to work. But the fact that James Orengo spoke about this, he cannot be intimidated and all. And what happened to um, Otinda Mol? Put this to context. Yes, um, let me say that James Orengo is the minority leader uh, of the minority party in uh, the Senate. And, and, and he also serves in the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee of the party. Honorable Tindia Molo was the Vice Chair of Justice and Legal Affairs Committee in the National Assembly. You want to remember that in those various capacities, it was their principal duty to articulate the report of the committee. And I want to tell you both uh, James Orengo and Otienia Molo did very well because that was the report of the committee mm -hmm. they chaired. So, so by dint of their leadership, they had to do so. And, and, and follow what Otiende, you know, did. Very good work on the floor of the National Assembly. I'm saying this to take away the thinking of the people, that there is some position on Otiende Amolo have or had that is different from us in Justice and Legal Affairs Committee that uh, put him in the situation where he is. Mm -hmm. and, and, and let me also make people understand that uh, Honorable Tiendi Amolo um, is a very sharp guy. He's, he's an asset to our political formation. He's a very good addition to our you know, parliamentary artillery. But people are forgetting that Honorable Tiendi Amolo is serving in Public Accounts Committee, which is the biggest opposition you know, committee in Parliament. I mean, my second term, I've yearned for the occasion to serve in that committee. I can tell you I have never got it. Mm -hmm. Otiende joining Public Accounts Committee took our party leader's direct call that Otiende must be there. Okay. In fact, our initial thinking was that he would chair it. Otiende served for about two years in Parliament without being in Justice and Legal Affairs Committee. Let me tell you, Honorable Otiende Amolo came to Justice and Legal Affairs Committee when we were favored with a few committee positions, including vice chair of JLAC. So he came to JLAC at that time of change mm -hmm. to lead JLAC as vice chair. This is normal political party reorganization of members in the committees. And I can tell you, I saw the rumors being churned out by the media that there is something afoot for Orengo. I mean, uh, who has a problem with Orengo? Okay. Forget about Orengo. was not in JLAC. Yes. Otiende is in PAC, which is the biggest opposition committee. You've not had anybody removing him from there. Mm -hmm. When Otiende was not in JLAC, JLAC was there and there were people. Honorable TJ Kajwan, mm -hmm. who has uh, taken over Otiende Amolo's place in the committee, okay? He's senior to Otiende Amolo in legal practice. Okay. He's senior to Otiende Amolo, uh, you remember, in parliament. parliament yes. 
This is about reshuffling. But the games are being played. No, tell, tell, tell me this. People, people are being reshuffled. Tell me this. Why at this point? Just one answer. Why at this point? Why could the reshuffle, why mm. could it happen a few days before this report came to parliament, before you started debating? What happened why is couldn't that, you wait until the Yes, debate yes. If, if you saw the report, it was not only Otiendi Amolo being dealt with. Several, you know, people in various committees from both uh, the side of the opposition mm -hmm. and the side of, um, you know, uh, the, 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 the governing party, the majority, were reshuffled. If okay. you remember, Ken, okay. uh, the chair of the, the Departmental Committee on Administration and National Security, Honorable Paul Koinange, died. And even when we were still on recess, regardless, we'll confirm there was already a notice on election. Okay. Of, 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 the, of the new chair. Mm -hmm. and, and so there was that, that, that reorganization required people, you know, are swapped across committees, labor and okay. others. And this coming at the time we said, instead of burden, let, let us put all of them together. together. It was okay. not only Otiendi Amolo. Let, let me bring so, so this Otiendi Amolo <laughs> issue <laughs> is an is, issue. Is, is an, it's all politics. <laughs> okay. and, and I don't know why you keep saying ODM, <laughs> ODM. I mean, if it were ODM, <laughs> yeah. then look at the report of the committee. Everybody who is a member signed it, except me who was out of the country at okay. the time. Let me bring it. You, 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 you're laughing. <laughs> he's speaking from my friend. Is my not. friend is just being very really dishonest. Okay. And, it, and it's okay. You I'm know, sometimes when, when there's a problem in your house, you mm. try to cover it up. Eh? What is happening is that uh, ODM used to be a very democratic party. But since the hardship, they are getting infected by intolerance, mm -hmm. by jubilee. Oh, yeah, okay. That, that culture of intolerance and dictatorship and, and tyranny, you know, uh, being tyrannical, yeah, they are getting that infection. You see, there is a, there is a culture of intolerance. Tiede Amolo was removed because of expressing an independent opinion. And what uh, James Orengo is saying... Which was this opinion? What, what James Orengo is saying, and uh, he was my lawyer sometimes back, he's saying he cannot be intimidated, okay? Mm -hmm. And that is the correct thing. This voting you are seeing today there, many of my colleagues from the Mount Kenya region, they are friends, we are buddies. Yeah? They were they intimidated. They are under intimidation. Mm -hmm. You know, they, you know they, are, they are under intimidation. So you, you but there are very be few. No, I cannot be intimidated. I'm like whatever. <laughs> I cannot. cannot myself, myself, my friend, mm -hmm. they have sent yeah. ARI to me. They have sent DCI. They have sent KRI for the last two years. I have been persecuted left, right, and center to change my stand mm -hmm. on supporting William Ruto. I can't. Okay. Over my dead body. Okay. You would have to kill me. Because in this country, you know, I come from the Mount Kenya region. I come from near Mount Kenya forest, yeah? During the struggle for independence, yeah? The British had guns, they had planes, they had grenades. The Kekuyu peasant with a small panga and a will to fight for freedom went to the Abadea and the Mount Kenya forest and drove the British out of this country. You must get a few people who must sacrifice for the greater good, mm -hmm. you know? They are sacrificial labs, and they, they are must in every struggle they are there. <laughs> you, you in, the Mount Kenya, in the Mount Kenya region, the tellers, in the Mount Kenya region, a few of us who are bold enough. Okay, okay, Ken, who are, wait, a, wait a minute. What is this a few, Amolo, Amolo said? said okay. I'm saying, yeah. I'm which saying, was his position I, different from the position know, of all no, no, of no, us? You know, you know. Let's, let's not believe that. You know what is happening. But but why is why Orengo is talking that way? Mm -hmm. You guys wanted to remove him as minority leader. And he's saying he cannot be intimidated. He says when his time comes, he'll go. He has seen people come and go. And that's what we are saying. Power is very temporary. So Otende Amolo was intimidated. Yes. Okay. He was removed. He was removed. In, we started in Jubilee. The page in Jubilee. They removed uh, Kipchoba Mokomen, Susan Keheka, Kithure Kindiki, Kibani Chongwa. Our sales were removed from committees. Others were sent to DCI. That thing has been going on in Jubilee. And now it, it appears the, the infection. The the it, but these guys, I think they are also a bit good because <laughs> even the level of infection is not very big. <laughs> it's, so it's just one guy here. One there. In Jubilee, it, it was a <laughs> massacre. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's intolerance <laughs> at the highest order. Okay. It's dictatorship. It's, okay. you know, it's tyranny. Peter, what is the question? What Utenda Molo said? Ken, yeah. can I ask a question? You know, I've served in the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee actually for eight years now. I'm the oldest member of ODM in the party. Okay? Today I'm learning, following this uh, reshuffle, that you're not asking me how TND joined JLAC. As, and, 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 and became a vice chair, and, and uh, how it is necessary that we keep, you know, swapping them. Mm -hmm. and, and today, following this uh, reshuffle, I'm learning that uh, Justice and Legal Affairs Committee 
is more powerful than public accounts committee. I mean, very strange things. But you see, you're if we, a we had a problem with Otiende, yes. if we had a problem with Otiende, the first committee you would have been removed from was PIC. It's public accounts committee. Oh, and PIC. let me tell you, Honorable Kajuang, I can tell you regarding uh -huh. today, Honorable Kajuang, for a whole year when we joined this parliament, was not in a single committee. Why? It did his time. He wanted to, you know, rest. You remember we were assisting and, and doing oh, yeah. all sorts of those and, things. And, and, and those streets on charges he was facing. Mm -hmm. What we are saying now is that we must keep giving each player an opportunity, you know, to play. Okay. We have no problem with Otiende. If we had a problem with him, and, and, and Ken, you know where we come from. If we had a problem with Otiende, he would not be in public accounts committee. If we had a problem with Otiende, you would be telling us what Otiende did which would, uh, you know, make us have a problem with them. Do you remember, Ken, the presentations we were having in Parliament were live on television? Go to YouTube. What is this thing Utiendi Amolo said, other than this thing should pass, this thing should pass without amendment, which Utiendi Amolo said, which would offend us? He wrote okay. Baba text. No, 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 he, I can he wrote Baba you, text. I can message. tell you. Okay. But, but this text, text uh, you, you know, again, Ken, I've heard of it, huh? <laughs> It is between Otiende Amolo and Baba. <laughs> and Baba. He has not declared there was a text message. Otiende, I saw deny in some media that uh, the only text he has been sending to Baba as, uh, I, I did Get know away. Baba is his client as an individual, but that is what he said. Mm -hmm. I have not had Baba to come and say. And I had some people saying Baba must know. I don't know whether it was in your studio here yesterday. The, the reorganization of members, the placement of members in committees is, is a function of the whip in the National Assembly. Okay. You don't need to consult Baba. And I'm then, one person, you, you know, I'm, I'm not a question you, on that, you, Peter, you, before yes. I go to him. Mm. Then what was Orengo talking about yeah, correct. when he said he cannot be intimidated, he's seen people come and go, mm. and his career, when his time comes, he will leave, at the back of these allegations mm. that there was a move to remove him. What was he talking about? What I would tell these people about... No, 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 no answer no, 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 me. No, 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 Stop okay. being a lawyer. No, no, that one you should ask Orengo. No. <laughs> but, but let me tell <laughs> you, you know, ask Orengo. But let me tell but you. But why are you answering for Otiende and you don't want to talk? No, no, no. Because Otiende is my junior mm -hmm. in, in I don't politics. Believe you. No, he's I my don't believe junior. You, actually. You're being Otiende clever. is my junior, yeah. at least in parliamentary politics. <laughs> By the way, what I wanted to say, Rigadi, you must be very careful. Are you not going to talk about Orengo? Let, let me tell you. Orengo will always be there. People who followed what he says blindly without reading through became nobodies. You know where Kina Dr. Hashem Uchodo went with Mogeuzi. Uh -huh. And maybe that is the warning I'll give to people like Otiendi Amolo. Mm. D uh, study Orengo. Very, in fact, Orengo, I think, is, um, is somebody who did a lot of Shakespeare acting. When you watch him, you see Othello, you see <laughs> Julius Caesar. Don't follow Orengo through what he says. How did Orengo vote in the Senate after saying all those things? Uh, do you remember? Yeah. I support and but, I vote. But, but, but yes. you see... So, so, Orengo is a person you cannot separate from our party. Orengo is a person like Otiendi Amoli. You cannot separate from Baba. In fact, let me tell you, the most pampered members of parliament by Baba, to our envy at times, is Orengo and Otiendi Amolo. You get what I'm talking about? Okay. But I'm telling you, don't go between Baba and the stories Orengo will have with Baba. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I'm saying this for young politicians watching us outside there. These people were beaten at Kamkunji across the nation together fighting for... They have stories to talk about. Together, okay. You will follow Rango on the face of it without listening to him deeply. Mm -hmm. You'll find yourself in trouble. My, my friend, yeah, he's going, no. just being a good lawyer. Yes. He, I, I mean, I, he's I, just I being a good lawyer. No, 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 he no, no, knows no. for Rango to speak that way. Yeah, There's a big be. problem. Yes. You know his colleague uh, said in Parliament, on the floor, mm -hmm. that these ODM characters are Baba's cows. On the floor. They just follow. So I think if you don't follow, there will be repercussions. But what I'm happy about ODM is that the casualties are minimal. Okay. Yeah? In our place, it's a lot. It's, 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 you know, you say, even if you have a different view, you know, you must toe the line, and nobody is supposed to think. You are not supposed to have your own brains. Other people are supposed to carry the brain for you. And, the and, and, we, well. and we are having a situation where... Mm -hmm. Uh, quite a number of us are saying that is not possible anymore. I can, you, can, you, can, can, yeah, did you I, I listen? I want to come back to that uh, Did you listen <laughs> yeah. to the communication by the speaker? To what extent did he plow from that report, which Otiende was the co player at? L let me tell you, this is normal reorganization. No, it is normal. Of team players. I, I, don't, I don't believe you. No, it is not normal. I don't believe you. Yeah. This is not the no first time James that. Orengo mm. speaks like that, mm. prophetically. Orengo. He's a good debater. I want you to listen to this other thing he said. Yes. In reference to what uh, Rigad yes. is saying. And it's come to pass. Let's listen to this. 
I am very happy with Mr. Sang. I'll forever call you my learned friend, not to your neighbor who is next to you, because you need to be candid. When Parliament is dealing with something which is clearly unconstitutional, we should say so. Yes. We should not let it pass. Yes. But if it passes, yes. even the courts are going to say, what was Wilkoman there, was Sang there, was Kilonzo there, was the Secret uh, uh, Attorney General Emer Emeritus, was he there? Was the speaker there, who is a, a legal student, was he there? So I urge you, <laughs> I urge you, I urge you, I urge you that this bill is only for rejection. And in conclusion, I want to talk to my sister Nyaugenya, Honorable Beth Mugo. We have gone through the trenches with you. You know how, when governments are in power, how they behave. I think probably you can give people on the other side a little education. That sometimes revolutions eat their own children. Yes. Yeah. Government eats their own people. This government is going to punish you more than they will punish me. I'm telling you, in another one year, in another one year, you will be crying in my office to come and represent you. I know, I can tell you. I, I've appeared for President Kibaki when he was in the opposition about laws which were made here. I've appeared for President Uhuru and Vice President Ruto when Kanu was going away when Kibaki was taking away his members and making them ministers. I went to court on their behalf. But now that they're in power, they are forgetting. And power, when power gets into your head, I can tell you, you will never remember that one day there's a bigger power almighty that will deal with you. All right. James Orengo at his element at that time. I'm just being told here that that debate that we played previously mm. was as regards to the impeachment of Wajia governor mm. and not necessarily about the audience politics. So somebody's just telling me that. I don't know how correct is that, but... No, that is true. That is true. So this was a prophetic word yeah. from James Orengo. It's yeah, come it, it has come to pass. And, and yeah. what he said currently... Can yeah, that's what is happening. Mm. Those of us who made Ukuru Kenyatta president, who brought Jubilee, outsiders in the government they formed. We are subjects of persecution. We are subjects of intimidation. We are outsiders in our own government. He dines with the enemy. The people who are opposed to him are his closest buddies. Those who made him president, those who work day and night are outsiders. And they are permanently intimidated and persecuted. Mm -hmm. So the prophecy of James Orengo has come to pass. And these are lessons that uh, everybody now has to learn. And we are saying ourselves, uh, if God is gracious enough to give us an opportunity to form the next government, we are saying probably what has happened to all of us is a good lesson so that uh, uh, what is being done to us, we don't do to other people mm -hmm. when you get to power. Because uh, it's, a, it's an awakening call that uh, people get to power, it gets into their heads, and they forget where they have come from. Okay. So what Orengo said has come to pass. Has come to pass. Yeah, it has. And that's one of the times. And uh, I see uh, Parliament, there's a communication from the chair. If we could just cross over to mm. Parliament briefly just to understand what's happening. Um, could we get those live pictures oh, from would, Parliament? No, they need them two constituencies. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, why don't you confirm the ones that have gone through? We go, you ones have gone through on about John one. <laughs> Honorable Speaker, Speaker Mark Nyamita. Yes. Honorable Speaker Mark Nyamita, Uri constituency, I vote yes. Very well. Honorable Speaker, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Honorable Speaker, uh, Kaleba Misi Saboti, I vote yes. Very well. Next. Speaker, Danson Mwashako, MP Mbadi, I vote yes. That's Dan Mashako? Mashako. I vote yes. Mashako, did, you, yes. did you get? Mashako. On, honorable, honorable Speaker, can yes. I vote? Yes, with this. Uh, this is Honorable Joshua Chebiagon Kandie, MP Baringo Central. I am abstaining. 
Very well. No, no turn. Next. Next, next, next. Uh, that um, I, I, th I think, gentlemen, the vote is back after the committee of the whole house. That's what's happening. Well, actually, I had voted before coming here. Oh, you had voted. I think those are those on, on virtual. On, on virtual. The numbers okay. will be over 240. Okay. And, and this time is going to be faster because um, those saying no have moved officially to the opposi opposition side. Mm -hmm. Those who are saying yes came to, you know, the, the governing side and the voting was going very fast. Uh, I voted before coming. Before coming. Mm. Did you take the second vote? No, I took okay. the first one. Mm. Oh, you took the first one. Mm. Gentlemen, uh, away from that, we'll go back to that. I want to discuss what happened this week, and uh, I'd like you, Omosh, to put this to context for us. The proposals by the Deputy President, the bottom-up approach, what yeah. is this about? Well, uh, we were with the Deputy President and the Mara, yeah? Central Kenya leaders, in a meeting that we requested. And um, we, leaders from the Mount Kenya region, have made a conclusion that uh, positions of leadership in our region are not a panacea to our problems. Okay. And uh, we are not going to solve our problems by being given a position. We have started looking at our economic issues, and we are looking at uh, an economic revival uh, program, a Marshall Plan sort of for the region because we are hard hit. Mm -hmm. And uh, given that the majority of our people from our region are inclined to the deputy president in the next uh, dispensation, we were mandated by a group of 62 members to start engaging him mm -hmm. to discuss. Uh, 62 from Mount Kenya. From Mount Kenya. Okay. What is his plan if elected as president for the region in terms of uh, reviving the economy? and making sure that we put money in our pocket and we requested a meeting and uh, we went there on a friday and the whole night he took us through his Plan. economic model okay. the bottom up of putting money down because we have had the trickle down model where money is put in big companies but it's not trickling down and he was explaining to us that his strategy is to empower people from down here. We get the small scale traders, provide interest free loans to give them money to do business. And uh, that will bring a lot of money circulating down there. And it will spur economic growth and it will make people improve their lives. So that is what we were discussing. And uh, the following day, we interrogated that model. We had many questions. He had a team of economists. And the third day, we were telling him our specifics. Okay. The guaranteed minimum return for our cash crops, coffee, tea, milk, rice, mira, pyrethrum, blah, blah. We were telling him about that aspect of providing money for small businesses. The Mount Kenya region people are basically business people. They are farmers and business people. So we were quite happy about those two issues. The guaranteed minimum return fund for, this, for, for the farmers, for the cash crops, and the provision of interest-free credit to small business people. We were also discussing with him an issue that is a big concern for us, the evictions and demolitions of buildings without notice, you know, which has had a very, very negative impact on our businesses okay. and the morale of our people. So that, and we are seeing our engagement for now is on economic issues only. Only if we agree on the economic interventions that are required for our region, Okay. We can go to phase two to discuss what will be our involvement in the implementation of those programs. Okay. In terms of positions, in terms of being in government. Okay. But until we get there, we are not interested okay. in positions. And the reason, our reasoning is simple. These positions mean nothing. Okay. The Three. presidency is in our region. Our people are crying more than anybody else in this country in terms of being down, down, down economically. And therefore, when other coalitions are meeting to discuss positions, communities will get this, will get that. Ourselves, we want to discuss with anybody mm -hmm. what are the economic interventions that you have for our region. Two things yes. I get here. This is about 62 members being mandated yes. to talk to the deputy president about yes. your region. Yes. One, clearly this was about your region. Yes. I don't see where the bottom-up falls 
nationally because it was about your region and your interests as the region first. Yes, yes. That's the first thing that you, you said to me. So I want you to tell us, even before I go to my second question, because I need to engage with Peter also on this, where does the rest of the nation fall? Because if every region has to come and talk to the deputy president about the specific needs if he becomes president, will it even happen? That's what. And then secondly, what does he get in return if he understood what you were saying? Is it the support? What, what does he get in let return? Me, let me explain to you. Yes. We had met him to discuss our region. Your region. Before we did, mm -hmm. he gave us his national roadmap for the country. Okay? For the entire country. He said, gentlemen, I want to listen to you. But before I listen to you, why don't I tell you what I have? So the economic model, the bottom up, is not for the central region. It's for the entire country. After he explained to us the economic model for the entire country, and we were satisfied to a larger extent that okay. it is doable. Okay. Then we took time now to raise specific issues. With it. So okay. it's, upon, it's upon other regions, if they so wish. To meet the deputy president. If they wish. Okay. That is our approach. Okay. You know, every region has what its does own get approach. In oh, support. Your support. Yeah, support. Which you say you're not discussing at this point until you're satisfied yeah, yeah, yeah. with the first Until we agree. Okay. Until we agree. In fact, ourselves, we are looking at what we are calling a Kibaki moment. Okay. If we were able even to put this country back to where Kibaki left it, we are quite That's happy. Okay. We are okay. quite happy. Okay. So that is a good beginning, and then we can improve from there. But ours, our priority, number one, is economic. Number two is economic. Number three is economic. We are not interested in positions because nobody can tell us that a position at the presidency or the deputy president can help us because, because we are suffering. It. Okay. Yeah, we are in trouble. All right. I, I, I'm talking to Peter now. Looking at what they are proposing with the deputy president, I'm just left to wonder why exactly they had to meet the deputy president for this. Yet, when we began the conversation with the guy, he said... Um, He's been intimidated for the last two years. Mm -hmm. They've done everything possible to make him change his thoughts on supporting the deputy president. The support is already guaranteed. <laughs> so you're telling me that what he gets in return is the support, which to you is already guaranteed. He has my support. Yes. He needs the support of everybody else. Mm -hmm. okay, he no, but the people who met him are people who support him. I'm saying him. that's okay. Yes. That's okay. You see, you can't do business with somebody you don't know. You first take time to know the person, understand him, look at his capacity, look at his zeal, look at his capacity, look at his uh, passion. Once you are satisfied, it's just like if you are going to marry a girl, you don't go and start negotiating the bride price after meeting the girl the first day. You hang around with her, come we stay one year, two years, you find she's a good girl, you can get along. When you feel now that you can go into marriage yeah, and start a family, you them. go and see the parents and discuss what is the bride but price. But to, to me, this support is already guaranteed. Try explain for me from where you sit, yeah. um, what bottom-up would mean for this country. You know, Ken, I, I don't want to debate, you know, village, uh, you know, political talk, whether they are held in Mara or wherever about uh, on a national uh, you know platform like this one uh, i want us to discuss things which cover the entire nation and i can tell you even if i were to do so on matters how to run the country uh, i think there is no time i can waste my time listening to the deputy president because you can only learn how not to run the country from him ken this is the second in command in the country a person who goes everywhere saying is this is selected not just, uh, you know, nominated or appointed as before. What is this thing the deputy president, you know, is fooling some people about, which he would not do? This is interventions that has caused, uh, you know, Kenya to be where we are. When I entered parliament in 2013, the, the, the debt burden of the country was 1.1, uh, uh, you know, trillion. Or thereabouts, where are we now? Nine. And, and, and we are at nine because of the wreckage. The deputy president with the Jubilee administration in the previous government had, they were just taking loans all over. And, 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 and you know, Peter, you can't and, 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 we, and, 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 and we still laugh of it. You, you I mean, can't, I mean, no, but the, you can't the, divorce. The, you can't put this to the deputy president. He was the deputy president, there's a president. I mean, if they have to. They're take, both there. Yeah, they're you, both there. Yeah. The, the, that's so why I'm telling you. Them. Yeah. This is a person who has had the opportunity to do these things he now pretends, you know, he wants to do with, with, with localized people seeking political survival in a hardening space. I mean, let us be practical. Is it not true that year by year the, the auditor was confirming that up to a trillion 
of our three trillion national budget was being stolen. Ken, I was last in, 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 in Italy just before the corona breakout. And do you know what? Those people who pretended and then took our money saying they're going to build Aurora and Camarer, the Italian government is, 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 is camping at Central Bank even now, mm -hmm. and over 25 billion from us. I, I was in Marrakech, there is nothing even in terms of a sign. And, and, and who are the people doing all these things? Then that person now comes, he has some idea about how to develop the country. It cannot be Deputy you know, President William Ruto. If Rigade is talking about the Kibaki government, did Kibaki turn around our economy and develop this infrastructure alone? These things happen under the coalition government. Are we forgetting that Rigade? And if, if Deputy President has been unable, despite that vantage position, you know, to push what you call Nyeri, as a deputy president elected, what is this guarantee? Uh, prepare, go and vote for Aila, who worked with Kibaki and, and reorganized, re engineered this economy. So, so this is something, can, and, and I want to assure you, Rigadi, let us not pretend this is about political, you know, you know, survival. I want to ask if the deputy president is this nationalist thinking of areas, uh, do you know since he became deputy president, he has never stepped into Oma Bay County? He's Oma Bay part of Kenya. Look at the looting in these things we were calling electrification. You know what became of KPLC, what became of all these energy sector related corporations. And then see what the audit reports are talking about. Oh, we are not fools. This is a guy whose constituency has gone as confirmed by parliament today. And uh, you know they are sitting with uh, you know, a few people who have been tagging around thinking he had any future. And now they'll be surviving going forward. Unfortunately, it is too late. Central Kenya will be under President Uru Kenyatta and the direction it takes. Okay. Um, Deputy President William Ruto is principal assistant to the president. He serves at the pleasure and the direction of the president. The president, if he so wishes, no, can no, seek no, his no, advice. Not at the pleasure. No, no, no listen. No, no, listen. No. In, terms of, in, in terms of in terms of implementation, in terms of activities, okay. the but president okay. assigns him duties. Yeah. No, not the office, mm. assigns him duties, whatever. I want to tell uh, the Honorable Kaluma, Mike Ibaki was Minister for Finance for many years. He was Vice President for President Moy for 10 years, and there was economic ruin. The minute he got in the driver's seat, he turned this country around. What you need is a driver. And uh, once you are a driver, you can take responsibility. Look at what is happening in Tanzania. There's the new president who just took over the other day. You can see the kind of um, activities, the kind of vision that is there. Yet she was just here in the background. Because they show us this show, thing the, yes, DP, yes, the DP has done Wait from which we can Wait see he can do better than I'm, I'm they have to talk about that. Now, yeah, she was, she was, in, the, yeah. she was in the background. Mm -hmm. But since she got the driver's seat, mm -hmm. you can see the direction she's taking. Okay. Uh, you cannot uh, say the deputy president cannot say what he should have done. He should have done as deputy president, he wants to do as president. Those are two different positions. There is what you can do as deputy president, there is what you can do as president. It's a totally different ball game. Okay. Because so, when so you are he president... Would, he would withhold what could help this country. No, no, no. no. I'm, saying, I'm yeah. saying the deputy president mm -hmm. advises the president. If he sits wishes. in the cabinet. Mm -hmm. if you what can. is this policy has pervaded in the cabinet, which the cabinet has blocked? No, uh, you, for, for which uh, you my, can, myself and yourself, you can, you can, you can, myself and yourself do not sit in the cabinet. For, for which so you, yeah, you can't yeah, say you, can, you, can, you cannot say no, what you goes say on the cabinet. What you say is meeting you about the what I'm saying regarding is that he has a platform. If he had some idea about how to move the country forward, he has various platform from where it can be pervaded. I've explained to you. Uh, and, and, and beyond uh, what you say is, is, is the strangulation is getting from the, the, from the president. Can you know, based on a few things you've done as a person, explain even the deputy president's wealth, which you only saw after he became deputy president, in terms of real hard work, this bottom-up thing, you go telling people you can sell chicken and become a billionaire. You know, the deputy president can say is, <laughs> there is uh, you know, shortage of uh, you know, fools in Kenya, but, but, but he believes. I think, uh, you know, looking at him, that Kenyans are actually fools. Okay. I, I, I think, Ken, eh? yeah, I think my, my colleague is not letting, when he talks, I let you him finish. finish. Yeah. Because I went to school and I was schooled properly, that when somebody is talking, you let him finish, then you comment. The deputy president advises the president. Whether he takes the advice or not, that is a prerogative. You cannot force things. You advise your boss, he takes the advice or he doesn't take it. Okay? When we talk about wealth, there are people in this country who are wealthy. 
nobody talks about them. There are people who own a quarter of this country. And they are in public space? Yeah, they are. Okay. And nobody talks about it. Everybody talks about the wealth of William Ruto because he was a chicken seller. He's not supposed to have anything because of his background. It is wrong. He must explain where he got it from. Yet there are people in this town, and we have been in this town for a long time, Ken. We know what they own. They own banks, they own what? They own the entire, the entire country. And nobody asks them about it. Those are good boys. Them, they are okay. Uh, they are supposed to acquire wealth uh, properly. But William Ruto, because his father is not known, his background is uh, poor, he was nobody, he's not supposed to have anything. It's the kind of things ourselves we are going through. You are being said because you have a little property, you must explain. Because you are nobody. Yet this town is owned by people and nobody is asking them to explain. You know, how did you build this building? They are not asking. But you yourself, because you are in the wrong side politically, because you are not supposed to have anything, your father was nobody, you are not supposed to own anything. I'm telling you, what we are doing in this country is criminalizing enterprise. And once you criminalize enterprise, that's why we are having problems. Let me what is let this enterprise? Let me tell you. The DP is engaged in. Uh, you know his pay and we, we appropriate it in parliament. But the other people, what, why do you just talk about the DP? Is, yeah, yeah. What, what I'm saying is that the DPUT president is the same as those people, so there is nothing new I ask can you, do with Ken. I, I ask you, the leader of ODM mm. put up a multi-billion uh, hotel in Kisumu. Mm. Have you asked him to explain where he got the money from? Uh, which hotel? I would anyway. know. Anyway, uh, let's, no, 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 let's, no, no. let's not go there. Gentlemen, I want to, yes, I want, I want, I want to take you back to 1997, yes. when, uh, after YK92, yes. when the Deputy President uh, went to Parliament. Yes. Um, retired, uh, the late Moy gave him the first uh, Assistant Minister position. He later became Minister of Home Affairs, all that. Um, go to the next election after 1997, 2002. He was back in Parliament, right, as a Member of Parliament. And that time he became a full Minister. Go to 19, uh, 2007. Now it's with the coalition government, with the Railo Dinga. He became a minister of agriculture, right? Remember the home affairs, all that. Then go to 2013, he became the deputy president, and he's still the deputy president. As a strong supporter of William Ruto, let's look back at YK92 until his journey. Is there something that you would say today that this is what uh, he has done? And based on this, we know that he's a transformative leader, a transformative leader, that if he takes the mantle, things will be different. Yeah, oh, yeah, bottom-up oh, yeah, oh, yeah. will be, will be, his will be record, implemented. His record as Minister for Agriculture. Which, no, that, let that, me tell you. that's where to let me tell that's you. the wrong place let to me, No, no, it isn't. Yes. It isn't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When he brought the issue of subsidized fertilizers, yeah, and uh, that brought a lot of activity in the agricultural sector. And a lot of scams. What happens yeah. in... Any time there is a positive development, mm -hmm. there are various negatives about it. But I want to look at the positive side about it. Okay. That uh, when you give uh, subsidies for fertilizer, you empower the farmer. And there was a lot of growth. He went to the Ministry of Higher Education. He's the one who sorted out the double intake impasse that has been there for almost 10 years. You know, we had this issue of the double intake. Even myself, you know, I, I had just moved. I, I went to university in 1985. The people who came in 1986, you know, we were staying outside college for two years. Yes. It is when he became the Minister for Higher Education that uh, he sorted out that thing. As Deputy President during the first term, before these guys came and chased him away from government on March 18th, the government we voted in 2017 is different from the government we're having today. It's a totally different government. The first five years of the Jubilee government is when a lot of work was done. And a lot of corruption was reported. They go together. And a lot of deaths. They, they went together. Yes, they went together. And uh, he did his job. Mm -hmm. He was all over the country. We have done over 7,000 kilometers of tarmac. We know electricity, electricity connection uh, moved from 2.5 to almost 7 million, you know. A lot of uh, TTIs that were constructed in almost every constituency. The guy is up and about. And uh, his passion for work and hard worker, and by the way, be from the mountain, have a good feeling about him because we are also very hard working and we have a weakness for people who work hard. People who wake up early, people who are able to put a whole day of work and we see them working. We, we normally agree with that kind of a person. So ourselves, when we even listen to him, the sheer passion for hard work, work ethics, because it's also very important to be a hard worker and also having the energy to work because this country has a lot of problems. It needs a fellow who can move and get things moving. Okay. Yeah. I'm, 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 now, just based on what you have said, mm -hmm. your support for the deputy president has been galvanized. 
There's no two ways about it. You confirm it that it's there, regardless of if it convinces you economically that he will raise this country to another level. It's already there. Yes. It's already there. Peter. You know, Ken, why do they need convincing if they already know what he can do? You know, I've asked uh, regarding a simple question that, you know, tell me this time the deputy president sold this chicken you keep talking about. There's a person who left university straight for YK 92. And after, th after that, you, you see the chains of, uh, of them. How come this deputy president had nothing you would see as the wealth in our house until he became deputy president? And then, regard, are you telling us that uh, as a minister, okay, you can now separate what he did in agriculture from the successes of Kibaki? But as a deputy president, he cannot influence those decisions. The fact of the matter, Ken, uh, luckily for me, I've been uh, you know, in government since 2013 as a member of parliament. This country was destroyed in that first regime of handshake. In fact, what handshake has uh, done is to stop first the regime country. Of handshake or the, of the, the, the first government. regime of jubilee. Okay. That first term. It's a time where we moved, uh, you know, the debt levels from the one trillion, I'm talking about over seven trillion. It is now going back, going up faster because of the gap it created and the amount of repayment we have to undertake each year. And, and, and Ken, I came to this studio on morning shows and evening shows. I always made uh, noise. There's a lot of debt being taken. There is a lot of debt being taken. Debts were being taken half of the amounts you are taking were going into people's pockets. And then they are in audit reports. Now, this government now that they are running from is a government whose main preoccupation is repaying debts in an economy destroyed through corruption. Okay. And, 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 and uh, you know, those debts. So they, they have take to both, the, both of them take the fall. Correct. Both of them, the president and the deputy president, for what happened in the first It was the government with his influence. Now that he says he was very actively involved in the last government, that is what I hear him to be saying. And I can tell you, but they take I, I can tell you regarding, can, can you came to parliament many occasions? Well, the deputy president, when it came to things like borrowing and those other issues, who would come as deputy president and without, uh, you know, um, any prior information, you see him seated there. So people are being whipped. You have to take that. You know, the looting which has been in this country, the people who are in court over it, are they not all people associated, you know, with the deputy president? So, so that is why I was saying, if you want to tell us that this guy, you know, suddenly has some unique heart for Kenyans, he has something called bottom, you know, up, demonstrate to us not picking a success of a Kibaki regime, not picking a success of a President Uru's regime uh, when uh, it was successful and, and, and leaving aside others. And that is why I agree with the President when he said, you know, you are either in or you are without. You cannot persuade anybody that as a me, I'm in, I'm in Minister for Agriculture, you would influence government policy than when you are, you are a Deputy President. And, and if indeed this government has failed, what is the deputy president doing in it? He still found it. Uh, Ken, you know what amazes me? <clears throat> I keep on hearing people saying the DP is finished. He is isolated. He is uh, going nowhere. Yet all these talk shows, there is nobody, there is no other candidate who is under discussion. Yeah? Which means his candidate is a serious candidate. Okay. When we met him, People from Kieleweke are making noise at us. Why are you meeting him? They said he will not be around in 2013. Why are you bothered when we meet him? If he's a guy who is isolated, he is finished. He will not be there in 2022. Why are you so bothered? No, we are about, not bothered. About, I'm, you I'm can saying, meet I'm, him as many I'm, times I'm asking, as you want. I'm asking, you know, even I have had the other candidates. There's Kalonzo Musioka, he is not in for discussion. There's Musalia, you have written him off. There's Gideon Moore, you have written him off. This is the only guy who is being discussed. And that is why we are also discussing with him. That's why we are having a conversation. This is a serious candidate. It's a candidate with a serious following. Okay. You know? And I'm saying, mm -hmm. let us also be fair to each other. I would want you also to get discussions, to discuss about the wealth of the other candidates. Don't discuss about just one. Why this particular one? There are other people who are candidates, who, 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 and they are in public limelight. Okay. They are in public limelight. Okay. They seek to occupy public office. Let, if we are going to have discussions about one candidate, mm -hmm. let's, line up, let's line them up. Okay. Let's have that discussion. 
let's discuss about the wealth of Raila Odinga. Mm. Let us mm. look at his history up to where he is up to today. And I also want to tell Galuba that they are to blame also for the ineptitude in government. They are burdened their role of being an active opposition, a credible opposition. Any government needs an opposition to check its successes because there is no government that is perfect. It is a good opposition, a credible opposition, a strong opposition that makes a government better. They came to government, they are even more uh, government than ourselves, you know? But so there is nobody to raise any issue. Much do you agree that even you as a member of parliament with the oversight role, even if you're in government, you're allowed to still oversight? We do, we do, let me tell you. That. Now that is a problem. Okay. When they stopped uh, asking questions, we started. Asking the question. We started Only about, when they stopped. Yeah, yeah, of course, okay. that was their yeah. work. When they did, we started talking about milk, we started talking about coffee, and then the harassment started. Okay. But we never gave up, we still continued. No, can if they could respond. just do their job properly yeah. and, uh, uh, and the oversight government, mm. offer checks and balances, be very active about it, most of these excesses will be there, they will be there, they will okay. be addressed. No, 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 okay. Ken, this one I have to respond to. You know, you know Ken, there has been this talk mainly by their side that, that there is something called opposition in Kenya. We killed opposition in the 2010 constitution, and I'm happy we are discussing this with you as a lawyer. There is nothing called uh, opposition in government. The idea of a presidential system is that the entire parliament oversights the executive. And now, led by the deputy, they destroyed it from the beginning. If you saw how people like Duale were speaking in the previous, you know, 11th parliament, you'd think he's some prime minister for the government. The, the idea of a presidential system is that everybody in parliament should work as a unit seeking that only the right thing is done for the people. But they, 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 they went to the other side. We were doing oversight. And on Ken, I'm happy because most of the times you used to come to parliament. How many times did you see us even being beaten, assaulted by fellow members of parliament when we are pushing these ideas? To date, we are not in government. And in regard the, let me tell you, this thing you people keep banding, you know, around, you're in something you're calling government. We've been in government, by the way, I'm in government since 2013. I'm in the, the, the first term of government, uh, parliament, isn't it? I just as you. So this idea that ODM has entered government, we are not in jubilee. We agreed to, you know, reorganize this country on some particular identified issues with the president. Okay. Uh, the things keeping us in the studio and, and keeping people in parliament as late as now. Raila has said before that once we are done with, you know, refocusing the country to where it is going, we remain ODM. And on regard, they will say, and, and we'll confirm here that many are the occasions I take our independent positions as a party without caring you know, what um, you know, you Jubilee say. is thinking about. Okay. That is what we are. Okay. But I would request that this indeed is a weakness, not of the imaginary thing he calls the opposition, but of parliament as a unit. But let me also request you regarding, and I agree with you on, the, on that last point. Why then do you oppose BBI? When in BBI we want to reintroduce the official opposition, having you know, realized this particular deficiency, uh, minority and majority system. doesn't yeah, work anymore. Yeah, it does not work. Mm -hmm. You see Mbadi now supporting Kimunya. And by the way, that is how it should work. Mm -hmm. They should support one another. If it's but something... in oversighting right. the executive. That is why the executive is not there. Right. That's why we are saying now bring back parliamentary system. We want the ministers to sit there so that we can deal with them on this corruption, on their inefficiencies, on the weaknesses we are seeing in terms of service delivery to the people. They have nowhere to hide from. And I was telling you, regard that from June, no minister will come to parliament. Because of, uh, obviously... It's presidential uh, system. They tell you they are in state house. Mm -hmm. So let us agree. No, no, no not just Let's agree. Even, uh, not, uh, you know, you know, you know my, my, my happiness, I've, I've been through these successions myself. And I was in the 22 uh, succession. Yeah? I was personal assistant to the current president. Mm. Myself. Mm -hmm. And we were in it. And I was just telling my colleagues, this thing called system and deep state, just forget about it. From... September, nobody will take illegal instructions. People align themselves to the realities of the ground. A police commander will be told something. I found it in the Because people can see that there's going to be change of government in the coming dispensation. So what he's saying it is true. 
from September there will be nobody. Mm -hmm. Even all these people who are harassing people up and down, everybody will be on his own. There are some cabinet secretaries who want to become governors. They have to resign and go back to the ground. And everybody has to go back to the ground. And that is why I urge my colleagues, please listen to your ground very carefully. Okay. Gentlemen, I have... can you agree now we are agreeing mm -hmm. on, on that particular that, issue? That, that, that in the long run, mm -hmm. there are things if we discussed objectively, we would agree we should support the BBI. Okay. Because now you see it's accepting parliamentary system with its, uh, you know, parameters. Agreed. I think he made, he made it clear from the He's beginning. confirming a number of things. Yeah, that, that and there was just no and benefit. And, 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 and I want you to invite Rigadi one time so that we can address every particular provision of the document in its, uh, you know, contents, mm -hmm. not, not the politics of it. Okay. Okay. So, so that we can, you know, be meaningful, you know, to Kenyans about the difficulties we are facing, even in helping in their governance as, as, as members of parliament. Okay. Mm -hmm. Gentlemen, I want to discuss one more thing. Um, but first, where is the deputy president? Suluhu was in town. We never saw the deputy president. He said, uh, Emmanuel Talam told our crew today that he wasn't invited. He wasn't. During the vaccination, he said he wasn't invited. He wasn't. And this is not the first time. Yeah. Just there was a, a meeting at the judiciary a few years ago, probably 2018 or 19, if I'm not wrong, that he attended but he wasn't invited, he said, and he went in casual and he was always in suits. If you remember that meeting, uh, he was going out of town and suddenly realized there's something at the judiciary. Mm -hmm. And he made a joke of it and said, um, probably my invitation got lost in the mail. So it didn't start from yesterday. So the deputy president can only see the president on at the invitation of the president. Oh, yes. He didn't know oh, Madame yes. Suluhu. What oh, if the deputy president was to drive to the gates of State House? What will happen? What if he is locked out? Let me tell you, uh, Ken. It's possible uh, to lock him yeah, out. Yeah, it's possible. Let me tell you. Don't play out the State House. I was a government officer for many years. I worked in Harambe House. I worked in State House. State House, you go by invitation. They, we used to go there. Even have, as deputy president? Even as deputy president. That is a president's residence. Okay. And uh, there is protocol. And you go there when you have an appointment or when you are invited. So if you are not invited, why do you want to bother to, to go and chance? Yes. You could be open for or not. Okay. But if, if it's a wedding and, it, and you are not invited, why do you want to get crushed? Okay. It is unnecessary. It's the president to decide. If he wants to call his deputy, he can call him. If he decides his uh, presence is not desired, so be it. Okay. But I don't think the deputy president, where he has reached, he is going to go into meetings uninvited. And nobody would advise him to do so. Okay. If the president invites him to any meeting, he'll go. Mm -hmm. If he so desires to assign him duties as per the constitution, he'll be able to do what he has been asked to do. Public celebrations, you are never invited to them. We just walk no, no, in. No, it's why, there. Why can he... it's, it's there. The program comes out is by protocol. The protocol of uh, state functions, the public holidays, is that the deputy president invites the president. Yes. The programs come out, and he is invited, by the way. He is invited. Even cabinet meetings, mm -hmm. some he is invited. The ones he is invited, he goes. Okay. If he is not invited, he, will... he doesn't bother. Ken, yes. Let us not uh, joke on a national platform with matters that are in the constitution and matters of governance. The deputy president is being a rebel within government. Let me tell you, you've just mentioned the day he went into the court building and for the first time he said he was not invited. You remember what he went to say there? Yes. That was the time of Aror and Kamorer. Remember that is yeah, the yes, day yes. he used the occasion to say only 7.5 billion was, was used. So, so I, can, I can tell you, just borrowing from that example, that when it is in his interest, deputy president will be in that function with or without this and thing is calling mm -hmm. invitation. He does not need, a deputy president cannot be invited to a state function. It's automatically there by dint of, of, of the constitution. Remember Ken, this is a guy, you know, chairing security organs in the absence of the president. What are you talking about? If he has not been invited, what is he doing at the deputy, you know, uh, president's official residence? If, if it is the fear that he'll be locked out, can't he be locked out from that national facility? No, he can't. Uh, he, the he fact can't be locked of out. the matter yeah. is that the deputy president is playing a victim, a rebellious victim from within. And okay. that is why I'm personally saying that the only lapse we have in BBI is that we did not put order in terms of how the deputy president should relate with the president. But the truth is that the current deputy president has made a very bad example of the constitutional architecture 
between the president and the deputy president. It is not something we can, we, we can, we can accept to carry forward. Gentlemen, we continue with this discussion. Once again, I'd like to take you to the floor of the National Assembly. Live pictures uh, for you. Let's see if you have them. Yes, so that's the reason why today Crossfire is taking a little bit longer because the members of parliament should vote, at least they said, before midnight. It's quarter to midnight, gentlemen. It's quite taken a long time. Probably they'll be there for another 30 or 40 minutes voting for the third reading. They just concluded the committee stage, second reading. They voted unanimously, I guess. That's why I went to the third reading. And we are waiting for the announcement, the communication from the chair, the speaker of the National Assembly, as at how they have voted. We'll definitely be t uh, telling you that. Uh, Jeff Kirui is still at Parliament Buildings, and uh, we wait for that vote to be taken for the third reading. Because after the third reading, it actually goes to the president. So uh, Parliament will definitely adjourn at that stage. But those are live pictures from the National Assembly. Gentlemen, is this uh, one of those times that you've had to work into the night? Is there another time that you've had to go up to midnight? No, very many times. Yeah. And, and, and Ken, you what, what, know, was it, uh, what bill was, was uh, uh, done, there for consideration? Uh, we did one during budget and appropriation. Yes. The other one we did is when they were pushing the security, security amendments and they the beat security. us up to the middle of the night, yeah. remember? <laughs> yeah, but wh when it is crucial, government or parliament will always reorganize, you know, instating arrangements. Okay. And, and essentially we are moving it from currently 9 o'clock until the business is done. Because you know currently until because of the COVID, business is done, yes, regardless of the yes, time. Yes, yes. No, okay. up to midnight, you midnight. cannot go to the, to the following, to the following day. day. Yes, okay. but, but uh, you know since, uh, you know, COVID, uh, we go up to up to nine o'clock on the few days, uh, you know, the two days in which we sit here. Okay, mm. very interesting. Let's go back to the discussion of the deputy president and uh, regarding going forward. One of the things that we are likely to see is uh, what the deputy president spoke to Citizen TV about. But my question then is, with all these things that you have said, this is a question that probably you've had to answer, probably in this studio or elsewhere. Why is it? not just so easy for him to take a walk. No, he wouldn't. First, to start with, uh, let me tell the Honorable Kaluba, the Deputy President has not misbehaved. He had a wonderful working relationship with the President until they came knocking. And some of us warned. And we said the admission of Raida Odinga to government will wreck Jubilee. It has come to pass. And we said he has a history of wrecking parties and governments for many years mm -hmm. and most of us were quite clear and we even disagreed with the president and he's our friend that we've been together for a long time we told him sir if you bring this man into your government mm -hmm. he'll break down jubilee it has come to pass deputy president will not walk out of government because he's elected he's not a vice president like jaramogi Ogiga Odinga, joseph Mrubi, joseph karanja uh, george saitoti mike baki those were people serving at the pleasure of the president when I went to vote for President Uhuru Kenyatta, there was another guy there next to him. That guy was called William Samuel Ruto. I voted for two people, Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto. I have not asked him to resign. All the people who voted for him have no problem with him. If anybody else has a problem with him, so be it. And the kind of humiliation he has been taken through, the kind of disrespect that has been uh, uh, heaped on him by junior government functionaries was meant to do exactly what you're asking. To push him out of yes. the government? Yes, and he decided he's not going to play into their hands. All this drama of humiliating him, county commissioners, him not being accorded security, being threatened to be evicted from the house, they thought the guy is so abrasive, he's so independent in mind that he will not take it. He took it in stride, he has never disrespected his boss, he has talked nicely about him, he has said, I accept. If the president has decided to reorganize the way he wants his government to run, he is the president. Okay. And he said it's okay. If he wants to give his duties of chairing cabinet subcommittees to Fred Matiangi, he said it's okay. If he wants to call him to national security meetings, he comes. If he is not invited, he says it's okay. He says, I'll stay. I'm ready. I'm willing. When the president has some duties for me, I'll do it. But in the meantime, he is a politician. And if anybody thought that uh, he can just stay in the office and wait, he cannot. When President Uhuru Kenyatta met William Ruto, he met him in the public. The guy was active, he was doing harambees, he was going to church. He is not going to change his uh, political style because if somebody doesn't like it, 
he continues to engage the people on a daily basis. Okay. He continues to go to church, he continues to do arambis, he continues to do empowerment programs, he continues to do what he needs to do. Okay. But he's deputy president, he is elected by the people of Kenya. The people who elected him have no problem with him, they have not asked him to resign. Uh, the people from the former opposition uh, are not going to ask him to resign. He okay. will not resign. Peter, what is the real reason why he doesn't want to leave? Is it because once he leaves, he becomes a civilian and he'll not be able to do what he's doing uh, as a deputy president? He's using the resources of the state to campaign, uh, as he's confirming. And, and, and by the way, he needs those resources, both the facilities he goes with. And, uh, and you know the budget of uh, the deputy president, I mean the it administration national I, I, I security remember it was committee. Cut, but it, it, is, it has been over 1.5 billion, mm -hmm. and it's money you don't account for. <laughs> you, you have money for the deputy president's residence there. So you have free facilities, you know, not serving the country, but, but going around campaigning. And, and to me, I, I don't think it is the best way or the best example to give, uh, you know, as a leader. As a leader, you cannot be, you know, in the public there saying uh, you'll, you'll be earning taxpayers' money without, uh, you know, doing anything. We did not enter Jubilee. We didn't come knocking into Jubilee, I can tell you, Rigade. We came into an arrangement with the president to disrupt the corruption, which was so deep in government then. We came to stop the exclusive approach with which you believe approached the last parliament. Ken, I was saying here before that uh, you served uh, and, and you were, uh, you know, in parliament most of the times during the 11th parliament. Tell Rigadi that whenever there was a serious public appointment uh, that was coming uh, from any, you know, serious state office, you would easily predict in the last parliament uh, which tribe the person would come from. If, if, if it is a position we knew would be aligned to the president, we would easily say, from Mount Kenya. I don't know whether you remember. And, and, and if it is, uh, you know, uh, a person from the DPT, you would easily say, Rift Valley. This is not Rift Valley, mm. Kalenjin. And, and, and the government was packed that way, yeah? If you had a person from Mount Kenya as minister, a person from Rift Valley was principal, I mean principal secretary, okay. and vice versa. We have gone into this arrangement to fight for inclusivity, to create measures to fight corruption, okay. to see how we can entrench, you know, uh, sustainable things like devolution, not some theoretical thing you say you'll dole out money to people in a continuous way without, you know, proper systems, uh, you know, for sustenance. And, and, and I can tell you, Gachagua, if it is about those issues that you'd uh, say we are working with Uru, that one you're with them to the end. Corruption must end. There must be inclusivity. We must deal with those other ideals beyond, uh, you know, uh, sustaining, uh, you know, well, you uh, the, the fight against corruption. You, you must have done very badly in matters of corruption because All right. COVID-19 billionaires mm -hmm. happened Came when you were there in the hardship okay. and nothing has happened. Gentlemen, let's, let's take you to Parliament. Let's see what's happening. I think there's a communication. Then we can come back and wind our discussion. Let's listen in. Being tricks from up. Honorable Speaker, on behalf of the tellers, I wish to report the results of the division, which is as follows. IS 224, the North 63, abstentions 2. Total, 289. 389. 289. 289. 289. Mr. Speaker, I beg your pardon, it's 289. Thank you. Very well. Thank you.
Yeah. Anyway. Tuesday is uh, 11. 11. They have all our members. Tuesday, 11. Just wish to, for purposes of the record, 11. to confirm, as has been uh, presented, the eyes 224, the nays 63, abstentions to total 289. The net effect, as you know, honourable members, this being a bill that does not require a voice vote, the net result is the eyes have it. And therefore, order that the bill be read a third time. Mm. A bill for an act of a bill for an act to amend the constitution by popular initiative. Honourable no, members. Time being, time being, 11 p.m. 11:53 p.m. This house stands adjourned until Tuesday, the 11th of May, 2021, at 2:30 p.m. All right, the National Assembly has taken the vote and uh, the third reading. So the next stage for this is for it to go to the president for presidential assent and definitely it will be amended through popular initiative. 224 members of parliament out of uh, 289 have voted yes. Um, 49 more than the required number of 175. 63 said no, which is a significant number, gentlemen, to find 63. And of course, two members of parliament abstained. And I don't know if you are counted in the two because you didn't take a vote. No, in the I didn't take this one. The earlier one, the was, earlier one you took. was 83. What, was and, it? and I think many members, you yeah. see, I told you this thing was just ceremonial. And ceremonial. Procedural. All right. So once the first vote is taken, mm -hmm. that is it. Total votes 289. Gentlemen, it's about six minutes to midnight. We can go to the next day and give you an opportunity to conclude this for us. Uh, let me begin with you, um, then we can conclude with the lawyer in this. What happens now, it goes to the president and uh, that's done. We wait for how long or he'll have to answer that. Well, uh, before I do that, I want to tell him. He yes. said they came to handshake to fight corruption. They have done very badly. Mm -hmm. COVID-19 uh, billionaires, yes. nothing has been done. The president himself, in his own admission, said two billion is being lost daily when there is handshake. So they have not done a very good job of In it. Okay. I think uh, it's good now that we are going to the next stage uh, to the people. Uh, ours was purely ceremonial, procedural, but it was important for us to appear in Parliament and be on record. Yes. Tomorrow, another day, my great grandchildren will remember we'll check and see that, that oh. when Kenyans were being overburdened, yeah, their grandfather said, no, it's okay. important. Okay. I knew that my vote was inconsequential. Even if, we've, even if this uh, bill was defeated, it will still go to the people. What it did, it gave us an opportunity to stand out. Expressive. And especially those of us who are independent-minded, who those who are thinkers and cannot be intimidated. We had a good opportunity to exercise our mind and tell our people we fought with our conscience, we also listen to them, and we do what they tell us because okay. it's important to do so. Okay. Yeah. Peter, explain to us the next stage, what happens, the timelines also, even as you conclude this for us. Then I'm very happy. In fact, in uh, biblical terms, the walls of Jericho have crashed. We are entering Canaan. In terms of law, the bill should be the president tomorrow, in my view. And uh, upon that, the president will transmit it to ABC, because that is the wording of the Constitution. It is not what uh, he would prefer or otherwise. The Constitution says he must. And then uh, IEBC now has to, you know, pro prepare for the referendum where all Kenyans are going to vote. At the level of um, budgeting, 
You know, referendum like uh, by elections are things which come when they come. You don't know when they'll not be there. So there, there was no budget, you know, arranged. We now expect uh, the Independent uh, Electoral and Boundaries Commission to get in touch with the Treasury. And I'll, uh, I'm lucky because I'll be in the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee mm -hmm. to, you know, help the processing of that budget on behalf of, um, you know, the plenary of Parliament, then later Parliament. Uh, essentially, let us now prepare for Kenyans to have the referendum. We are estimating that this uh, should be before the month of um, August. Okay. Uh, because there are some provisions which have to be, you know, implemented A year before. before August yeah. if, if they have to be realized. We don't want a situation where those constituencies which have been created are not available for the people they have been promised to be before the election. So we want this before August so that we can move forward. Would you, would you say this is a win and a loss for other people? No, I think uh, we just wait for the people of Kenya okay. uh, to look at it and make an informed decision. Okay. And uh, there, is, there, is, there is nobody who is winning, who is losing. This is about Kenyans. Okay. And it is them who will have to make the real decision. Okay, yeah. ultimately. Peter, win or loss for any group? Just as yeah, we the, um, the group under the deputy president has lost. You know, there has been the charade that he controls parliament. He's confirmed it. Let me tell you, Ken, what the members of parliament do is reflected okay. on what will be on the ground. Okay. All those people are now the troop for the BBI mm. on the ground, and you, you are going to see the, the, the campaign going forward. So this is a very big win for us. Yeah. And let me congratulate parliament know, for the, 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 the president. But I don't agree with him. We, we the, the deputy president has I never mean, taken a position, a position to, 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 no, no, to fight the BBI. No, but Ken, he see, you, you saw the voting. I, I saw the voting. You saw the voting. We'll have another the opportunity. The deputy mm. president can now barely control Kipsigis and Nandi. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, Rigadi Gashagwa, Thank you very much. Thank Presenting you. the people of Madeira <laughs> tonight on this show. Yeah. Thank you very much. And uh, Peter Kaluma, thank you very much also representing the people of Homa Bay, yes. and the people of Kenya tonight on this show. I, by the way, I went to school in Homa Bay Sango Academy. Yeah, uh, really? Yes. It's a good school, no, no yeah. wonder. Academy. So thank you very much for watching Crossfire. My name is Ken Mijungu. Uh, Marisha Witi, sign language interpreter tonight. I was in for Sophia Wanuna. She will be back next week. So is me. But remember, it's about five minutes to the uh, next day. Have a good night. God bless. See you tomorrow. We begin up and early, 6 a.m. We'll be giving you that update from Western Kenya where that gold mine collapsed. Lusige William will definitely be reporting on that. On behalf of the crew taking their time to be here tonight and all of you who has watched to late night, have a good night. God bless. See you next week on News Hour. Good night.